comes down to, I was really happy when I, I found out that Pat Shope is here. Pat Shope actually, uh, as a graduate of Penn State, got her doctorate in my department, right? In workforce education. I didn't know her then. I was off in the dean's office. On, I was uh, exiled to the dean's office for a while, and she came through during that period. Uh, but when I found out, I was thinking, oh, well, you know, prior learning system is so important. And I think it was Craig Weideman who said, Pat Shope is here. That's her primary responsibility to help us think about and move forward in the area of prior learning assessment. So uh, Pat introduced herself to me at the end of a MOOC strategy meeting, and I invited her to chat with me. She gave me a white paper that I read, really liked. We had one conversation, and now as we move forward into the whole MOOC thing, I think it's really important that Penn State figure out what it is we're going to do in terms of at least our own MOOCs, if not everybody else's MOOCs. And what you know, how do we feel about prior learning assessment? So I know how I feel, sort of. I mean, it's evolving. But I know Pat's been thinking about it for even longer, and how I feel isn't nearly as important as how she feels and other people around here feel. So I thought, let's, let's go ahead and have her bring us up to speed on her thinking about prior learning assessment quickly. She's got a few slides she's going to share with us, and then we're going to just chat and see where it goes from there. Pat? So I'll bring you up to speed. Um, I do come from workforce ed. That means a great portion of my background comes from training and development, although I have taught in higher ed uh, a little bit. Um, gave me that perspective of being in a classroom. Uh, but I come from training and development primarily. And you'll, you'll hear that as we talk on. You'll hear some of that come out, uh, that primary part of my background. If I had to describe prior learning and assessment in one phrase, this is it. It's giving credit. So let's take a look at the formal definitions or the pieces that we talk about when we talk about prior learning assessment. So it's the evaluation and assessment of an individual's learning for college credit, certification, or advanced standing toward further education or training. So that encompasses a wide variety of things, everything from transfer credit to advanced placement, credit by portfolio, credit by exam, no, you'll see all those listed in a slide coming up. But that's what it is. What do you already know that you can be given credit for? Learning may be acquired through work, corporate training, military service, or independent study. That's how we define it. So in essence then, it doesn't matter where you have learned what you know. If it's equivalent to what you would learn in the co college classroom, you should get credit for it. That's the way it's supposed to work. So then the third bullet point there, in order to be considered, and notice the quotes, that's really important, credit worthy, the learning must be, quotes again, college level. And I did that to draw your attention to those two things. Credit worthy, by definition, is whatever we say it is, which in reality means absolutely nothing to the outside world. Um, each institution defines what it means by credit worthy. So at Penn State, what's credit worthy to us may not be the same thing that's credit worthy to Shippensburg or to Wisconsin or to uh, Michigan or to Georgia or to Alabama or to Temple or to anyone else. We define that. Um, and that's one of the rubs, as, as I'm going to talk to you this afternoon about the reasons that this is getting resurrected, that's one of the rubs out there is who defines what's credit worthy? And what does that actually mean? It's just sort of a, a circle there. And then, again, college level. Well, what's college level? Um, one report that I have, and I have a variety of reports, and I'll be glad to let, the, let you see where a lot of this background comes from, um, estimates that there's $772 billion spent each year on education, adult education. Only about $271 billion of that is credit-bearing. That means $500 billion are spent to educate adults out there that they don't get credit for. It's, it's presumed in the world, in the world that we're inheriting, in the world that's changing right now, that, in, that if it's not credit-bearing, it's somehow second-hand knowledge. Well, $500 billion spent on that would tell us something different. Okay? But those two words or those two phrases are important to understanding PLA, what it is, what it isn't, and what it really should be as we move ahead. It's based on learning outcomes. In other words, then, prior learning is based on competencies. 
And those of you who are following all of the articles and the PR on disruptive innovation in education will be familiar with the word competencies as if that's something new. All education is supposed to be competency-based. That's what it is in the world that I come from. That's what it's supposed to be, learning outcomes defined according to middle <coughs> states. Um, that's what it should be regardless of some of the other things that are being attributed to it. It should have learning outcomes. Those same learning outcomes that you design and articulate for the coursework that we offer here are the same learning outcomes that we will evaluate the adult learner against. If you don't have them, then it's pretty tough to evaluate someone against a standard that no one has yet defined. And in fact, one of the problems, um, not just here at Penn State, but in many other places, but my concern is here at Penn State, is the fact that we don't have a good handle on learning outcomes here. And so our current system is somewhat arbitrary and lacking some standardization, and we can talk about that as we move on. Uh, there's also uh, a phrase that's emerging in all this disruptive education, higher ed stuff, about unbundling. Well, we unbundled all of this a long time ago. Much of what I'm about to talk about in these particular options um, were established here at Penn State and elsewhere in the 70s. So a long time ago, things got unbundled. So we unbundled them and we said, once upon a time, the delivery of coursework, the assessment of the coursework, that student, and then the awarding of credential would be under the purview of one faculty member or one department. But, again, thinking of from the 70s on, we said, oh, wait a minute. They could learn that same content at another college or university. That's fair. So we've been accepting transfer credits for a long time. Um, what if they learned it in high school and they want to take an advanced placement test? That option's certainly been there. What if they learn it through military? Now, military is very competency-based, and it's not aligned the same way our courses are. So for the most part, particularly here in our institution, we don't give a lot of military credit unless it's something that can be packaged that looks like um, um, our three-credit courses. And then industry training. So, okay, we've got alternative delivery, and we've got alternative assessment. So the transfer credit is coming into us in the form of a transcript. Um, we've got AP exams to capture learning that happened in high school. We've got the CLEP or DSST standardized exam, CLEP meaning the college level examination program, and the DSST is the Dante standardized subject test. Both of those that we accept, you can go on to the admissions website and see which test we accept here, which exam. The American Council on Education. Let me stop and talk to you about that one for a little bit because that's going to come back in our discussion of moving ahead with credit. That is a third party entity set up to do the assessment. They don't assess the learner, they go out and assess the delivery. So they are assessing, primarily they've been assessing military or industry training. Now, if you're keeping up with all this, they're assessing MOOCs, and that's being funded by Gates. Okay, what does that mean when they assess? It means that they go in, they take groups of faculty in, the delivery um, folks, whether it's industry training, military, or whomever, pays for them to come in. And right off the bat, it's 25 grand. And then there's some other charges to that. And that has to be renewed every three years. So, okay, council takes a group of faculty in and they assess the content that would be delivered. Okay? And they look at um, a wide variety of equivalent coursework in a number of institutions and determine that, okay, ballpark, this looks like it would align to three credits, six credits, whatever. Um, that might be in management, okay? Sometimes they get specific down to like a management 101 course, something that we, we might not have that exact course, but we have something that we refer to that. And then they make a recommendation, and that's all it is. It's a recommendation that we believe, that's them, they believe that it's worth that amount of credit, okay? 
Penn State officially accepts those recommendations. Now, what does that mean? That doesn't mean that every recommendation out there we will accept. That means we have agreed that we would accept their recommendations. It's then up to admissions, faculty, advising, it's, it's up to whether we want to bring this course in or that course in or that course in. You're going to find out exactly how little we take in in just a moment. Are there any questions about, you'll hear me refer to them as ACE, A-C-E. So five Coursera courses went through. Yes. Who would have paid for that? Would that have been Coursera? Gates is funding that. Okay. Yeah, they got a grant from Gates, so Gates is funding it. So moving ahead, if you want ACE to evaluate the courses, you're paying. 25 grand. 25 grand. Renewable every three years. Now, they make a recommendation. It's still up to the student. The students still have to go through that. So what that means then is if I'm a student and I go through one of those MOOCs right now, then I have to complete it successfully, whatever Coursera says, you know, to finish it and get the certificate, okay? Um, then if you read further, you have to take an exam. There's a proctored exam. And if you take the exam, then you're eligible under that recommendation. You're still not done. You still have to go to ACE and pay a fee and get a transcript. Once you have that transcript in hand, that's what you bring into the institution that you want to come to. Great, but what if the institution doesn't take it? Right now, we wouldn't take this. So the cost of the exam and the cost of the transcript would be two separate costs? Yes, and that would be borne by the student. Couple questions. Um, who gives the who gives the exam? They're and using or the institution, the MOOC provider in the case of it's five minutes. Neither. Neither. They are I have to look that one up. Um, Proctor, I think Pearson. Oh, okay. Yeah, that sounds right. Because I've read up on that. I just um, no taking it's an online proctored credit exam at the end of the course. They're working with a third party provider, Proctor U. Sorry, it's not Pearson, it's Proctor U to enable online proctoring so that students anywhere in the world can take these special proctored assessments via webcam at their convenience. Do you see why we wouldn't accept those at this point? So who who makes the exam? That's what I'm wondering. Um, that I don't know. Does Pearson make the exam? It's not Pearson, that was a mistake. Okay. It's Proctor U. My guess is the, I would say probably the faculty. The MOOC creator? Yes. Yeah. And my yeah. guess is that whoever makes it, it would have to be made before ACE evaluates yeah, the whole yeah, package, right. including the assessment. Hmm. But then the student would take it anyway. No, we wouldn't. <laughs> but see, that's what I'm wondering, too. Yeah, that's what you, that's we'll get into that later, maybe. Or maybe now. Yeah. We're, we're going to get, yeah. get, yeah. you'll get thoroughly what we do and what we don't here real quick. Well, that was my other question. You said um, at Penn State we officially accept those recommendations. We, But that doesn't mean we necessarily are going to take all their courses. Yes, we do not accept all those recommendations. We oh, say okay. we are able to, okay? But I'll show you just in a moment. Absolutely did. So all it is is a recommendation. Student still has to jump through the hoops, they get the transcript, they bring it to us, and that would be evaluated at the same time if they have any transcripts from any other colleges or universities. That could be done right in the beginning. Now, here's, here's one of the limitations to that, so I'll jump ahead just a little bit with ACE. We don't get to pick and choose and tell ACE which ones to go evaluate. We can't say, well, we think students might be coming to us with such and such MOOCs, so you should evaluate that. We're not going to do that. We can pay them to evaluate our own MOOCs if we want to, um, but it's up to the delivery where the learning takes place and is delivered to pay that money. And if no one pays, you don't get credit. That's why a lot of our students don't get credit. They're willing to assess. Let's, let's back off from MOOCs for a moment. So I want to make sure that we're good with the way things are before we put something else on. Right now, before MOOCs, they evaluated military and industry training. There is a whole host of things in military training that they evaluate and they believe are credit worthy. We don't take a single one of them. There is a whole host of industry training programs that they've evaluated and believe to be credit worthy. We've taken very little of them. How you can tell, they have on their website, if you go, 
and click through, you'll see the list, okay? The list is everything they've ever evaluated. Only the current ones that are currently in their payment schedule are live so a student can get a transcript. So another barrier to this is what if students don't go through the ones that have been evaluated? Or what if they do and then the agreement is dropped? Because if they don't renew the agreement every three years, <coughs> you might have as a student gone through that training or that education while the agreement was in place. You didn't want a transcript then. You weren't interested. You weren't thinking about going to school for a degree. Now you are, but the agreement's no longer live. You're out of luck. You are literally out of luck. So you're at the mercy of what's happening with these folks. Does that make sense to you? Okay, so it, it, there's a lot of barriers <coughs> to that. Um, we could add, uh, just in the credential side, uh, sometimes we don't want a credential for it, so we say no credential, it's worth putting up there. But where would we put MOOCs? Well, we'd put a MOOC right there. It's another delivery, okay? The same way we put badges over in credential. So without the MOOC and without the badge, what you see is the current system of PLA, okay? So if you work down through the list, you take the low-hanging fruit off first. If someone's coming in and saying, would you evaluate my prior learning, we would say, okay, um, traditional students do the AP exams. So if we stay in the adult world, we're looking at transcripts. Do they have anything that would come in as a transcript? And that would include any AP transcripts. Okay, whatever credits you can get there, great. And then you go to the next lowest hanging fruit, and that would be the CLEP or the DSST exam. You can go take those. You don't have to be enrolled as a degree student anywhere. You just go take them and you can bring that credit in <coughs> if it's something that we accept. And again, you can go to the website and see that. And then finally, the credit by exam and credit by portfolio options or are for those instances where you have the learning, you want to present it for prior learning credit, but it doesn't get captured in any one of the other mechanisms. So those are our internal credit by exam or credit by portfolio. So in theory then, on the books right now is a way to capture everything. Okay? So if you just, if you're again, if you're following all this, um, I think it's Georgia State University um, come out about a month ago, they're going to give credit for MOOCs. Well, if you read the article closely enough, all they said was, yeah, we're going to run it through our PLA system. And that's what I've been saying for months now. Right now, we can bring a MOOC in if we wanted to. That's not my decision. That's not your decision, necessarily. But what we would do is run it through it like everything else. So if somebody came to me right now and said, well, I've got this learning um, all about management and leadership, et cetera, et cetera, and I want to present that for prior learning credit, I would say, okay, great. Well, presuming I can find a faculty member willing to assess it, Presuming that the department is willing to entertain this, it's going to have to be credit by exam or credit by portfolio. So why would we bother with the ACE if we have these other two mechanisms? Why spend all that money to go through the same thing when we can do an administrative by exam or portfolio for a lot less money? Well, those are some of the things that we'll talk about today. And, and, and you can start building which way you would lean. I can tell you, I would tell you today exactly which way I'll lean but I'll hold that until we get some more discussion out. Not to muddy this up too much, but... Um, you can't so muddy this anymore. Yeah. It's already... <laughs> the way I've been thinking of this, we have an online program. We deliver through the World Campus. It's a BA. Mm -hmm. We already have me a mechanism for credit by portfolio assessment. Mm -hmm. that we already set up for that. So I'm really familiar with that and how that works. So when we started talking about... Um, our two MOOCs at our colleges, two of the five, I was envisioning just using the credit by portfolio assessment route. Forget that it's a MOOC, but just say at the end, if you happen to take that MOOC, here's the portfolio we want you to put together and use our normal credit by portfolio assessment. Right. And so that's why it wouldn't mean anything new in a sense. It wouldn't, except that. Here's the only thing to that. While all of these 
articles are coming out and everybody's like, are you kidding me? Credit for MOOCs and all of that sort of hype and, and um, everybody getting all uptight about all of this. Right now, we have to be real careful on what we do. All I ask is that you think ahead a little bit about what that step would do to the bigger system. Let me see. Uh, let me click ahead. This is all the more we take right now. Right. And I show you this to show you that you are in a very, very, very conservative university. I don't understand all the more okay. we take. So, the red is the adult. So, total of all these. Now, I don't have transfer so, credits so up here. Are you saying like 25 times we've done an adult portfolio this review? This is one year. In one year, per year, okay. University-wide. This is all campuses, world, UP, all campuses. All right. How many ACE recommendations did we take in that year? One. And Got it was for a traditional student. Right. And it might have been, there might have been more to try. Oh, yeah. I have no way to capture that. Yes. Because I have no way to tell you who's tried and didn't make it. Right. That would be a failed yeah. assessment. Generally, okay. my best guess is we don't let people attempt it unless we're pretty sure they're going to pass it. I can't tell you how many inquiries. I can tell you how many that I'm watching get turned down from faculty who say, I don't even want to go there. I'm not giving credit for work experience. Now nah, we're not going to do that. Mm, now nah, let's just hold it off for six weeks and by that time students have to take the course because of scheduling. We, we are highly resistant to this stuff here. So you have to understand the culture that you're in. So. There's a temptation to say, and I understand it, okay, moves, we got them, let's be great, let's be cutting edge, let's give credit. But when you do that, you're going to push all of this because students are asking weekly, can I get credit for this industry training? Can I get credit for three years worth of military, blah, blah, blah. And they're being told no, 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 all of these roadblocks, and then all of a sudden, we come along and say, oh, well, by the way, we're getting credit from MOOCs. It's going it's to be internal disruption. So we have to make sure what we're doing before we do it. Does that make sense to you? Well, the portfolios, for example, are done at the department level. Yes. Who's it going to disrupt? Well, right. look at the number of portfolios that get done. 18 traditional and 25 adults. Again, that's university-wide. But that might be all in one department that's not really disrupting any other department. Right. Now, our department agrees to be disrupted. <laughs> yeah. Does it's it not be, a it, like, I, Well, and, and I'm not advocating that you pull back on anything or hold back. Just that we think through this. So we might, that's, that's fair game to come out and say, here's what it's going to be in this area. But these areas aren't, aren't ready for it yet. It doesn't matter which way you go, only that we've thought it through. Because right now, we've got calls coming in here to World Campus Weekly of people wanting to do credit by portfolio and credit by exam in all kinds of areas. CAS 100, English. People have written books and things that their skills are right up there. They're public speakers and they're told, sorry, yeah. you'll have, you're going to have to do it but this But that's way. a department. It is. It so is. Can you, you say you don't have data on that, but can you just sort of estimate? Is it 5% of people who are actually saying there's a way you can do that, or is it lower or higher than that? All I can tell you is it's increasing weekly. One of the reasons it's the, doing this. The, what's increasing? The demand. Over, the demand. The demand's for, increasing. Yes. But like, are we are we saying no to like almost everybody? Yes. Yeah. You are saying no as a university right. to almost everybody. But I guess I just keep going back to the the individual level because I know like in our VA programs they're not. I don't even know if they've gotten more than two people who want to do it. But <laughs> the way they set it up, they're trying to prepare the student for success, as you said, because they don't even try it. They advise them not to if they can't, you know, meet the criteria. But they're pro PLA. They're ready to you know, they it wouldn't be the conservative uh, stance that I know is very common across the university. To put it mildly. Yeah. And that's my role. That's what I was brought here to do, is to try to move us forward in the right way so that our degree quality isn't compromised, so that the students who really do have and possess prior learning have that opportunity to be assessed um, without it being a free-for-all. Okay?
Okay, so you're going to hear me gatekeep both ways. That's my role. Do you know what the justification is for like killing anybody wanting to do that and only doing so to you? Is it like the department's going to lose money if they allow for our Well, it's a, ver it's a variety of reasons. Okay, so here's what I've heard. Um, no, that can't possibly be the same level of learning, college level, that they get in my classroom. Um, I do that, but they don't compensate faculty very well. I do that, but my department doesn't support it. Um, uh, I do that, but it would dilute the degree. Um, or that's that credit for work experience. So it's a variety of and a combination. Sometimes it's, I'm too busy to even talk to you, so I'm just going to tell you any excuse off the top of my head and hope that you go away. And here, some of the things I suspect they're not saying are, I really don't even have a good handle on what the learning yeah. outcomes are and what yeah. I'm doing. How can I possibly right. assess whether somebody else can be? And I have heard that. I, I have heard, said that? That's yeah, I don't, I don't know what I would, what would I assess them on. And I say, well, the learning yeah. outcome, so well, what's that? Well, we, that would be something that's probably articulated yeah. on your syllabus. Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> so the majority of these excuses aren't really legitimate exactly. excuses. Yeah. None, really None of them are. None of them are. The was that you know, okay, let's say we have, let's say we have 40,000 people in the MOOC and 10% of them want portfolio assessment. Ah, how would we even do all of that? Well, and I was going to say, part of what we've encountered is, is uh, misinformation and lack of information. Yes. So, I talked with a, a leadership group who had exactly the reaction that Stevie said, and they also made the comment that we wouldn't, we don't get any money for that. Yes. And when I came back to them and could show them the policy and procedures the university has in place that not only does the money come to this department, well, to the college, and then however we handle the college in the department, and that there are some where you can't just do it. We're not a pass-through. That you have to have, you know, taken a, a, at least, what, three credits. You have to be enrolled in a program. Then they were like, Oh, oh, okay. So then it's not thousands of people, it's right. you know, a handful. And, and some, and some would them. say they, they don't know how to do a portfolio, which is an easy piece to fix. We can, right. we can take care of that. Some have said, well, wouldn't we lose money? And so I'll use a term from my old retailing world. It's called a lost leader. Let them come in and you give them three, six, nine credits, whatever they learn, but they're going to stay for the degree. Um, the data show that they're more likely to complete college, they're more likely to um, stay and not transfer. So, so the money is there, and it's a small amount in the beginning. You're, we're not talking about giving someone half of their degree. Others do that. We're light years away from that. People will say, well, what's the limit? Don't even worry about a limit. Just, just think, can we get somebody three dang credits if we can just get that far? Um, so there's a variety of reasons most of which we can counter. We have the data. We can show and we can teach and we can learn, but we have to get over that barrier of resistance that this is somehow less than. Okay? So in some, some ways, the areas that are already doing this have a culture of acceptance yeah. and would be the prime areas. I mean, I know our art department does portfolios. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, you guys have a, a we have already. Yes, yeah. already so. I'm guessing they have a culture of instructional design. Mm -hmm. and Artists? Then, no, I mean in your in your college, you know what your learning outcomes yeah. are, right? Yeah. I mean, they, not right. not the artists themselves, but the the culture <laughs> is infused with design. Right? right. That's yeah. what I'm thinking. It's going to be the, the places where instructional designers live and work mm -hmm. that are going to be the early adopters of this. Yeah. And the, but he, and having people who can articulate how this works because they've listened to Pat enough and they've read, <laughs> you know, the, the various policies and procedures so that you can you can quash those those myths. You can debunk the myths. Yes. But here's the thing. It's funny to me for folks to say we don't do that here when it's clearly right there on the website that says we do and we have done yeah. it since the 1970s. So talk about compromising our brand. We do it every single day, literally. Because students are reading that, they're going, what do you mean? You won't do that here. Um, because I'm the one right now on behalf of World Campus that tells them the bad news or with the advisor. The advisor's on the front line. 
And that's not the level that I'm supposed to be at. I'm not supposed to be in each individual department as your gatekeeper, but I inserted myself into the process to see exactly what was happening. And so here's what happens here. And this is a very good um, way for us to look at it because there's so many adult students who are here at World Campus. So a student makes a request to the advisor, the advisor puts me in the loop, and I say, okay, I want to see a resume and some other things. Show me that this is a legitimate thing. I'm not going to just take everybody's word for it, because literally, if every adult knew, every adult would ask. Why wouldn't you ask for credit for prior learning? Because you want to reduce the time to um, finish your degree or the cost to your degree. So I gatekeep, and I say, let me see some things. If I think it looks like a legitimate shot, I go in search of a faculty. And sometimes I go straight to a faculty member if I, if I know who that person is or I can find that person. And it's the faculty who teaches the course. Sometimes I go to the department level. Sometimes I go around in this way and that way to try to find someone to talk to. Here's what they do. They shut it down right there. doesn't matter what reason they give. I can't even get them 99.9% .9 of the time to look at the student's credentials. That's the problem. You've got to look at the student. Now, if you look at the student and you don't see what I'm seeing, then we can talk about that. But when you're not willing to look at the student, that's where we have a problem. We're not even giving them a look. Okay? So, let's, that was the gloom and doom. Let's get, let's get back on track. And we can talk more gloom and doom later if we need to. Here's the characteristics at Penn State. And this is important because these characteristics are different if you go somewhere else. Okay? So we have a distinct set of characteristics. Course match. Other places it's not a course match. So six credits in marketing. Okay, they'll just bring them in as marketing credits. Well, we don't do that. If you say you've got a background in marketing and you want to try for prior learning credit, you have to name the course that you feel that your learning aligns to. The course has to be needed for a degree. Again, that's distinct from other places. They just let you bring in and collect enough credits, and when you get the magic number, you're done. <coughs> it's got to be a course that you need for a degree. Um, the faculty here are subject matter experts. In some places, they not only use faculty members, they use um, outside subject matter experts from business and industry. That could be legitimate, but we don't do that here, and right now we don't need to because we have faculty we could cover all the bases. We assess and award credit can I only. I'm clarification sorry? on that one. Are you saying is are you saying Penn State will only allow faculty to make that assessment? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's the way we're built right now. Okay. Now, if we need to change that in the future, but I'm not going to change that today because I'm trying to get faculty to buy into this. So right. that's one of the things I would, I point to when I hear them say. I don't believe it's the same quality. And I say, but you're going to make that determination. I'm not. Right. And so we don't want to change that. But in other institutions, they would go out and find, let's say it's human resources, and they don't have faculty on staff that teach that particular area of human resources. So they go out and find someone in the industry who does and let that person But here, what I'm seeing is, so, I mean, let's suppose it's not a 500 level course, it's a lower, that faculty could decide the criteria. I'm seeing that, mm -hmm. you know, maybe a, a advanced graduate students could even fund their way through grad school by doing prior learning assessments. They're qualified, the faculty yes. have bestowed yes. that ability yeah. on them gratefully. That's yeah. the model we were looking that's at. What we're yeah. looking at. Yeah. That's what I'm hoping. Yeah. And that would be that would be very good. But at the moment we can't do that. No, you could. Oh, okay. You could. Okay. Your hand will not internally. But you're not, not asking. You have, you, she's been shot down without even asking for that. Right, right. Yeah. No, and I have to tell you, when we talk to someone like Richard Alley, mm -hmm. who's teaching, you know, going to be teaching one of these moves, and, and this subject came up, and he panicked, thinking thousands of people. Once we assured him that we get the money, and that in turn we could use that money to hire someone he sure that he wants to do that could work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then he was like, oh, well, now we're sounding better. Okay. Now, let me play Adam on the other side of that. Let me talk about the money for the moment. There isn't a lot of money attached to it. So it's $390 per portfolio. One portfolio can be assessed for up to six credits at Penn State. 
Now, I always laugh at that because if it's a course match system, we don't have too many six credit courses. So it's most likely going to be $390 for a three credit portfolio. But that's okay. We would take that in, given where we are at the moment. Um, for credit by exam, it's $30 per credit, so you're looking at $9 for one exam. By the time, if you just look at the credit by exam, because I'm more familiar with how that breaks out, uh, $20 of each of that 30 goes to the department. So $20, $40, $60 for credit by exam. Um, so it's $390 for a portfolio, so it's a little bit more. But what happens is it gets all chunked out. So the well, department gets a chunk, and it gets chunked out to other places. So two-thirds, I mean, one-third, roughly? I think it's about two -thirds, that. Two-thirds, one-third. Yeah. And it depends on how your college, because I, I shared with them this leadership group in our college, the breakdown, mm -hmm. and it depends how your college handles that. It all comes to the college, it's just that it's supposed to, some go here and some go here. And in, in our college, we have a, um, you know, a philosophy, or whatever. it would all go to the department. And then the department would allow it to all go. So now you're talking even if it's $350, it could go to one person to do the assessment. It's not bad. No. But you'd have to make that case. And, and we know even with our world campus revenue, things flow very differently. In our college, it all goes to the department. Right. In Keith, you know, a good chunk of it goes to the dean. You know, Ours would be the same. Yeah. But, but that's... Well, so, so let me put that also in perspective for you. Um, that's an area that we're looking at. So in all of my purview of all the things that I'm supposed to be working on, that's one of them. And um, sort of as we speak, probably this week it'll start, there's going to be a university-wide task force that's going to be created that I can begin to feed all of these things to. So everything from compensation to every issue that you bring up today, we're going to be looking at and determining where we need to make changes. Um, but I can tell you that right now there is one dean, um, and, I, and I'm, again, I'm just giving you the full picture here, and this dean says, I'll fix that, just raise that up, and she named a figure, and it's actually a percentage of tuition of adult part-time students, and that's wrong, because you're going to put that on the backs of the very people who can't afford to pay. She felt that they should have the majority of the burden and be charged, and if you're a matriculated student, full-time student, it would just be part of your degree. Um, so that's wrong. Um, I'm just trying to understand that. It, was, it wasn't based on, they weren't saying a student pays like $3,000 for a, a three credit course, so it's going to be a percentage of $3,000. Yes. That gets paid by the outside, where they're actually trying to transfer costs to... To the student. To student More being to assessed? Student. Yes. So why is that not right? Oh, because they've already done the... Well, because in this particular right. okay. model, it was going to be so the adult part-time students would pay a percentage of cost. So let's say if you were resident instruction full-time, you wouldn't have to pay anything. Well, yeah. And so that's not quite equitable. So in the conversation, um, there has been some data gathered about what other schools charge for this. So I can tell you they charge about the same, only some of them charge less. Nobody's charging for the most part, much more than we are for credit by exam or credit by portfolio. But here's my point in saying that. It doesn't do you any good to just look at what others are charging. That gives you some sense of what the market is doing, what the market will bear, but that doesn't tell you anything about the cost to do it. So until somebody can show me what it's going to cost for those faculty, that's where we need to start to set a fair and equitable compensation because we're only going to get one shot. We're not going to be able to revisit this each year. We've got to get enough information and do it right the first time. So that's one area that's not going to change quick, at least not with my stamp on it. We just have a whole lot more to do. So if they're doing this in Earth and Mineral Sciences, then they could have their faculty track the amount of time it takes to yes. intake the person, review the portfolio, write their approval. The problem is, how many of you actually done? Well, and, right, and like I'm sure I can count on one hand, and if that, right, um, and it would vary from course to course. Well, yeah, the cost because would vary. Make and her cost might not be the same as her. Exactly. Yeah. So how do you yeah. put one figure on something like that? You you can't. Not to be fair at this point, we need a whole lot more information. 
And that's the rub. I can get everybody to track what they're doing, but when they're not doing very much, it's pretty hard to track. And if I say to, and I don't mean to beat up faculty today, but I'm just being very honest with you and giving you a picture. If I say to faculty, tell me what it costs you to do this, you know, can you estimate what you think it would cost you to assess a portfolio, if they, one, don't know what a portfolio is, two, don't have learning outcomes articulated, three, don't understand the competency world, they can't possibly give me an accurate figure at this point. So we've got a lot of work Well, at to this point, there. I guess the cost to do it would have to include the identification of the learning outcomes, mm -hmm. the development of the rubrics to assess the portfolio. In your world, right. yes. Now so we have to, it's, it's one thing to assess a portfolio with a student in front of you, it's going to be a whole other set of criteria if we have a MOOC. Well, I'm saying even no matter what, if we don't have already have uh, the uh, criteria set up, which seems to be the case in a lot of places, to figure out how much it's going to cost, you have to get the development cost of the whole mm -hmm. system and say, and we guess we're going to do about 100, 1,000, 10,000. So you could factor some of that into each assessment. So. But another way to look at that is this is a cost of doing business yeah. and that Penn State has to absorb because if we don't start doing this, game over. A bit, you know, if we don't future. start doing a better job with prior learning assessment overall, we're going to be left in the dust. Right. Well, I mean, for so Penn State has to do it. Yes. For our two MOOC, it is absolutely a loss leader approach. I mean, that's why you want to do it because in the for the one MOOC, it will be the equivalent of a, an exact three credit course that is the first course in a five course certificate program. So it could really help reduce the cost of that student if you want to do the certificate program. You know, you pay full freight for the other four courses, but you only pay three ninety in a sense for that first one. Um, you know, we hope to make it up in volume, right? I mean, if you're hoping that you would introduce that many more people to that program in the first place. And see, psychologically, what we know is that when students get prior learning credit, even if it's only three credits, they they get it in their head like, I can't leave this place. They got me started. They gave me credit. When the reality is most anyone's going to accept Penn State credit. But they don't think that way, and that's fine. We're not going to say, don't worry about it. You can transfer it anywhere. No. I mean, because the real rub is what comes in. We are very conservative in what we accept, but most everywhere would accept those credits from Penn State. But psychologically, they feel like, oh, I've got to stay. I'd have to start all over again mm -hmm. somewhere else. So there really is a lot of benefit in terms now, of enrollment. Can you help me understand, because one of the surprises, one of the reasons I thought we really need to have this meeting, this conversation, is you said you can't apply for credit by portfolio or credit by examination until you're already in a degree program. Yeah. Yeah. Now, to me, that seems like other people are not going to say that and we're going to say, we won't tell you whether you can get through in three courses or five courses it's until after you're already in. Problem. And you have to pay the time, do the application, do all. And other people are going to say, sure, we'll, you know, we'll do your exams beforehand. Why is it that Penn State's position is, I know Penn State's probably because we're just so far from where we want to be that you didn't want to throw up any other hurdles, but why, why is it? Okay, well, let's look at both sides of that. Number one, it is a problem because that's what students are finding. Now, for the most part, what they're finding out is they're talking to Phoenix and Thomas Edison and some of those other places, and they don't do assessments the same way we do. So it's a lot easier to take those credits in. But then they want the Penn State degree, so they call us and they say, well, look, if I go here, they're going to give me six credits. If I go here, they're giving me nine. What are you going to give me? Problem. We can't tell you that. Okay? Now, I think that's a problem. I wish we could do a better job with that. That's an area to look at. But look at the other side of that. We don't need to be in the assessment business for a whole bunch of people who aren't going to be our students because if we're already not paying faculty what they should be to do this, we're going to tie up faculty. They get the credits. They could take them anywhere. We're not going to be a pass-through organization. You, you want Penn State credits, you'll get Penn State credits to a Penn State degree because we can't give you credit until we've been done an assessment. Yeah, but, so you look at it as tying up faculty as opposed to employing doctoral students. And that's a possibility. That's different. That's if you look at it that way, and if yeah. the assessment is a good one, and you give somebody Penn State credits, then you've said Penn State certified. There's nothing wrong, because they actually do know it, because we 
Right. But, but I don't see, see the downside. But that puts us in a business of we didn't deliver that. Right. Okay? It got delivered whether it's a MOOC or industry training or a non accredited school. We've assessed it. We've put our stamp on something we didn't deliver. That bothers a lot of people. Right. Especially when then they don't enroll. It and one of the benefits that, that we get from that is they enroll. And if they then, if it's not a requirement and they don't enroll, we've done that. And what did we really get out of it? Well, it bothers a lot of people. But that's, again, one of the things we, I think we need to help Penn State get over. Yeah. Because uh, I read an article in the last two days. Don't remember which one. Don't remember which day. But because there's so many that said it's basically a conflict of interest for a university to assess its own teaching. And that, that basically another piece and, and on the people outside are going to look at it that way and say, no, no, we only will assess our own teaching. And we're the only ones who can assess our teaching. And you know it's it's But that's, that's been the traditional model. Right. We held on to all of the pieces. But I think we need to help yeah. people understand that no, it doesn't matter. As you said, these things are separate. Yeah. And it doesn't matter where they learned it. If we're willing to say Penn State says, because that's going to be our job. I mean, that content is going to be out there. Exactly. We, our job is going to be assessment. And if we say we won't do it for anybody but our own, man, then Pearson is going to come in and clean up. You know, they're going to take it. But that's why I showed you the way it exists yeah. now. Right. So that you and understand I now I know, how I know I'm are. not arguing with you. <laughs> I'm just... And you can see where the world is going. So yeah. The right answers are somewhere in the middle of this, and welcome to my world. Right. What the MOOCs did for me is it shone a spotlight on this a lot quicker than I was going to get that spotlight there. Yeah. So it's good. It's uncovering a lot of things. And the benefits from what we learn will benefit all of those other people who aren't going to take a MOOC, but they have military or industry training. So right. it's going to be good. Right. But you can see how many different pieces there are to this. So let me... Let me real quick go through a couple more things, and then we'll see what you know, what you don't know, and what we haven't yet hit upon. Are you going to do that assessment, or are we going to have that done externally? <laughs> well, we know. I'm just kidding. Pay attention to these two things, because this is a piece of where we can be going. School to school articulation, you know what that is, right? So you, get, you sign an articulation agreement with the local community college that says you take your first two years there, we'll accept all of that and bring it in and you're on your way. Okay? Again, that's an area that Penn State in the past has been very conservative. Do we have some articulation agreements? Yes, we do. The interesting thing is, and this is what people don't always realize, is you can sign an articulation agreement school to industry. which is what Shuba and I were talking about. So in other words, do like ACE does and go out there and assess it and determine if it's equivalent to what you would do in here and then you're doing the assessment once and then we don't have to do it student to student. We All we do, we're about to. Yeah. There are, there, are some, there are some bits and pieces out there of that where we, I want to jinx it. <laughs> we don't want to change it, but we're about to do it for we're about several hundred students at the right. graduate level. Nobody is doing this at the graduate level out there. We're about to Can maybe sign this all up. Can you just up. unpack what you mean by that? <laughs> well, so okay, in let the, me... an agreement between Penn State and H. Nope. You're cutting eight right out of it. More like a system. Like Boeing or Boeing, Lockheed Martin, something like that. Yes, because there are pieces of it. So what would Lockheed Martin get with this articulation agreement? Okay, well, what would an employer want? They want to reduce the amount of money they're spending on tuition reimbursement assistance, okay. so they get money saving. Okay. They get an additional um, reason for their people to participate in training because they can dangle this degree. And that, is, that articulation, that evaluation was done only by us. So it doesn't count somewhere else. If another school wants them, they've got to evaluate. So if Lockheed Martin does something like this, I'm just making this up completely in As you all know, because most of you know me. Um, so if Lockheed Martin does an articulation agreement with Penn State, then Lockheed Martin has some training program that they put their people through in house. Mm -hmm which is part of that $500 billion that is being spent on non-credit training. Yes. 
but there's an articulation agreement that gets them credit through Penn State yes. so that they don't double pay both for the training and then for the credit. Yes. Got it. We get an enrollment training. And we know that since they can get through our degree right. a year quicker, they're more likely to come to our degree afterwards. So, so let me give you an example that's not that yet there, but this is one I've used. So I went down to Mon Alto, you know where that is, down by Chambersburg. And we talked about all of this, and they said, okay, Pat, where do we start? I said, well, there's no sense starting over in biology, because I don't think too many people are going to come to you and say, can I get prior learning credit for biology? So where do you think they're going to start? Well, I don't know. I said, okay, what major industries do you have in the area? JLG. Okay, great. Do any of those people ever want to come here for a degree? Well, yes, as a matter of fact, they do. What degrees do they want? They want management degrees. Did anybody ever ask about prior learning credit? Well, yeah, as a matter of fact, they did. They've got this management training program pretty extensive in JLG, and they've been asking us for years could they get credit for that. For years, we've said, sorry for your luck, you have to start at zero. I said, okay, here's what you do. You go to JLG, and you ask to see their training program. And you, you take your team in the same way ACE would do, and you evaluate it. So there's a couple things that would occur. One, it's worthless for credit. It's nice training, but it, it doesn't equate to credit at all, and now you know. Okay? What if it does equate to credit? What if it's six credits or nine credits? And they can get a jump start on a degree at Penn State. We call that a stackable credential. These courses, whether they equate to a certificate or not, would be the first credential towards an associate degree. That you got them in. What if you find that it's close? It's almost worthy of six credits, but there's a couple things missing, and we find out a lot. We find out with trying to bring courses in from the community college. Brandon Wine's dealing with one with business law. Our business law is four credits. The local community college is three. They've been telling people for years, sorry for your luck, you've got to retake that course. I say, look, take your continuing ed department and create a mini course for the competencies that they're missing. Now you've got even more revenue, and now you're securing your enrollment stream. Everybody wins. Students win, industry win, we win. Okay, why am I telling you that? Because think about the possibilities. You're talking about moves. You get out ahead of them and be proactive and determine whether they're assessment worthy. Right now, okay, let us let do what they're doing. But that doesn't mean that we can't, in the future, do more of these assessments. So you say MOOC plus two credit online experience equals? Yeah. yeah. The possibilities are endless. When you break this apart and quit worrying about the credit hour and quit worrying about everything having to add up and you begin to focus on competencies, now you're beginning to see the possibilities. A global review is sort of the same, only there's no articulation agreement. We do global reviews here, and a common one is in criminal justice. Um, they have reviewed the Pennsylvania State Police Act 120 training, and if you've taken that, all you need to show is verification that you've had it, that's worth X amount of credit. So it's a global review. The training has been reviewed. There's no articulation, but it's been reviewed. So we call that a global review. Okay? All right. There is no exchange of money in the articulation. No. There's no it's exchange of money. Getting more students right. Students. And those are things then we decide as we move forward. We're, we're charging. Well, in that one. But it, the articulation agreement that exists now from school to school, there is no exchange uh, not of money. School to school, but in the other example, the global, the business, the lobby, the example, uh -huh. that one. Yeah. Okay. These are very long definitions, but here's the point about this. This is what Penn State has felt assessment has been. And in the first definition, this comes from the materials you would find on the assessment website under Schreier, which is where assessment has fallen under. And they considered assessment, assessment of the process, assessment of the learning process. What PLA does is say, Process aside, we need to start assessing the learner for competency. Middle state gets a little bit better. They talk about learning outcomes, but they're still 
they're still basing an assessment, a successful assessment on do you have learning outcomes and can we see all the pieces that line up. PLA is about assessing the student for the competencies. So, here are your options and everything that I've said boils down to this. This is what exists and what we can start to look at as we start to piece out all of these other issues. So, the question is, does competence, competence exist and were the learning outcomes met? So let's talk in terms of the language we need to use. So we can assess the student through the traditional PLA methods. Right now we can do any MOOC. If Penn State is willing to say that, and right now Wayne and Craig are like, oh, no, we're not willing to say that. Don't go there yet. Okay, don't do that. Don't be saying that we're going to take MOOCs for credit. Okay? I could change next week, but that's where they are right now. But we do have a mechanism that we could bring them in. So we could stop right there. The department could basically say that, is what you're saying. The department yes. could say, that MOOC is the equivalent of our course. If you pass our test, we'll give you credit for yes. our course. Yeah. Yes. And I, I mean, you don't need my approval. I, I sign nothing. It's all done at the department level. Okay. And that's